Paloma, wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Thank so you we did a report on you some time ago. Tell me about that. Two months ago, so I live in Tijuana. Uh, I have dual nationality, dual citizenship. Mexican-American. Mexican-American. Right. I was born in Mexico, and I came to America through my stepdad. My mom remarried my stepdad when my biological dad passed away. So I became an American citizen, and uh, but I live in Tijuana. I've lived in Tijuana for 10 years. TJ. TJ. <laughs> so um, recently, with the caravans that have been coming in for last year, which people don't know, people think they're very recent, and they're not. Um, they've actually been coming in for about a year. The, the big caravans for about a year, and um, Tijuana residents are very upset. I'm one of those residents because it's not only now an invasion to America, it's also an invasion to Mexico. To Mexico, right. I've, I've been thinking about that. Please, tell me more. This is fascinating. So we, um, we realized what was happening when they got there in November. Um, they took over our city. They, they, they started getting resources. They took over the city. I mean, this is is five thousand people. It's or a what big is city, it? but they right. took over very specific places that okay. we really value okay. and take care of, and uh, and that we work hard every day to keep as good places and to make them safe, because we already have so many problems, crime, um, a lot, a lot of a lot of problems in Tijuana. So we don't want any more. We want to be safe. We want to enjoy our lives. We went through a really bad time in Tijuana in 2008 and 2009, so we know what it's like to live in danger. We know what it's like to live in fear, to not be able to go to the grocery store uh, because you could possibly get killed, like literally. We, in 2009, I decided that I would only go to the movie theater because it was a closed space and it would be the only place where I would go. And uh, the next day we had a shooting at the movie theater. So for two years I didn't really leave my house, two years. And so what was the, when these, this first caravan came through in, into TJ, um, what, what was the impact of that in these kind of specific so they, places? They picked a very specific area of Tijuana, which is right by the border, called Playa de Tijuana. And it's an area that, uh, that we really take a lot of pride in. It's safe, it's clean, and uh, they just, they pick that area because of the proximity to the border. So the residents of not only that area, but different places of Tijuana came together as soon as they arrived. As they were arriving, we came together, we had meetings, we went to City Hall, we went to different places to sign a petition for this not to be allowed in our city. Right. We took this very serious, we organized a lot of people, and uh, and we came out and we demanded for the government not to allow this to happen, especially in that area. Um, because it's an area where we where we we go to for fun, to, um, and it's by the beach. So we came together, about 350 residents of Tijuana, it was uh, mid-November last year, and, uh, and we, we had a, a, a very, very bad confrontation with the migrants and the activists that are helping and pushing these caravans. So tell me a little bit about this. Um, I, I kind of want to get the general picture. You, you, you consider yourself like a border security activist almost. Would that be fair to say? I'm a nationalist. Okay. I want sovereignty for both countries. I've been fighting for sovereignty in America for many years. In 2008, I saw a trend of what was happening to America if we didn't take action and do something about it. I saw it in California. I lived in Los Angeles and I saw people not wanting to speak English anymore, getting offended when you spoke English to them, um, bringing really? the bad part, like the bad aspects of Mexico, bringing them to America instead of, look, if you're looking for a better life, you're going to try to have a better life and not bring right. the bad with you, which is what I saw a lot in 2008. And for years, I felt like maybe there was something wrong with me. Maybe I was being... Uh, too judgmental. Judgmental. <laughs> maybe right. just, you know, no. And now I realize that. So in 2015, when President Trump came down that escalator and I and I saw him pointing out the problem, I was like, this is what I've been, what I've been waiting for wanting for someone to actually stand up and do something. 
because I was out there. I was writing articles about illegal immigration in 2013, 2014 um, as a Mexican. And I, and I go back and forth to Mexico. And that's why I also see, um, I, I know a lot of the culture of a lot of people coming in just to have babies, just to take advantage of the government. Right. That's right. so common. And it started maybe with a few thousand people, then hundreds of thousands of people, and now millions of people. And it, it's not going to stop unless somebody does something. So, you, I take it you believe in the wall? 100%. Mm -hmm. And um, what's your ideal outcome with respect to uh, President Trump implementing his border security initiatives? So, respect towards America. Sovereignty and respect, because people, especially in our countries, um, no longer have respect for America. I grew up having a lot of admiration and respect, and it's it we're losing it. People think they can just walk all over America, come in, do whatever they want, um, take advantage of it, drain it, and laugh at it. And, and, and I'm not you, okay with that. You would like to protect it. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful patriotic message. Paloma, such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for having me.